into a place of endless expression with the quality, styles, and prices you love. Max, what makes you, you. Beautiful and healthy looking eyes? It shouldn't be a compromise. Lumify Eye Illuminations, developed by the experts at Bausch & Lomb exclusively for the sensitive eye area. To cleanse, nourish, and brighten. Lumify Eye Illuminations, only in the eye care aisle. To gonna get it. Tomorrow on E.T., Halle Berry, Kevin Costner, Chris Hemsworth, are exclusive with the CinemaCon stars in Las Vegas. This is one of my favorite times of the year. That's gonna happen on this show tomorrow. Right here. Ooh. I'll be watching this show tomorrow. <laughs> Look, we leave you now with big news for fans of Bridget Jones. Ooh, good night, everybody. New Year's resolution, drink less. Oh. <laughs> E.T. has confirmed that Renee Zellweger will be back as Bridget Jones in a fourth movie titled Mad About the Boy coming to Peacock Valentine's Day 2025. Happening now. Watching for thunderstorm development in the hours ahead, along with the primary threats of those storms, all of the latest timeline and what happens behind tonight's cold front in just a bit. I'm Dylan Collier coming up two big takeaways from Mayor Ron Nuremberg's State of the City address. He defends his highly criticized ready to work program, plus dishes on why he thinks the Spurs Arena downtown would be better suited for that part of the city than in other parts of the county. Senior homeowners insurance premium, the rates keep on climbing. So coming up, some simple things you can do to try to control those costs. The News at 5 starts right now. Much needed rain falling in our area early this morning, and it was a very welcome sight, but the potential for more on the way. Yeah, and those grayish clouds still hanging around could lead to possible severe weather tonight. That is what we don't need. Adam Kasky with the latest on a possible timetable. Adam. Yeah, typical spring setup for us around here. You know, we need the rain. We want the rain, but it can come at a cost in the term or uh, in the sense of severe thunderstorms, some high isolated wind gusts and maybe even some pockets of large hail. Notice our timeline here for the storm chances through the night through eight, nine o'clock, only at about 20 percent. But by 11 p.m. through 3 a.m., that's our primary time frame for the most likely time for showers and thunderstorms, some of which are likely to become strong and severe. You look at authority radar right now, nothing to worry about. If you have baseball practice or anything going on this evening, you should be fine. It's just hot and rather sticky outside, pretty humid. Thunderstorms are up closer to Austin and Round Rock, and then you get just northwest of Burnett and Marble Falls closer to Brady. That's where the action is at the moment, but we are expecting more development a little bit closer to us later in the night. All of your future cast uh, coming up in a little bit. Eagle Pass at 94, 89 Leon Springs, Floresville 87. We're feeling the warmth and the humidity. 94 in Mico, and as we go through the evening, temperatures falling off and a cold front hits around 1 a.m. We'll talk more about what that cold front means for the days ahead in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Let's take a live look outside right now at traffic. This is I-10 at Frio. And you can see as traffic goes into town, it's slow on both the upper and lower ramps. That's not that unusual, but there was an accident out here that was very unusual. And for those traveling through the downtown area, you may be sitting a little longer still due to the accident scene. Just after 3.30, SAPD officers say a man tried to cross the lanes of I-10 at Frio Street exit and was hit by an SUV. That man taken to the hospital. We are told he is in critical condition. The police say the driver of that SUV did stop, and right now they say no charges expected. With rush hour traffic underway, officers encouraging drivers that have to come through this area be even more patient than normal. New at 5, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg laying out his vision for the remainder of his time in office and beyond. His annual State of the City address, focusing on the area's robust real estate market and strides in workforce development. Our Dylan Collier with what some are questioning as the mayor's progress on that workforce project, but also what the mayor thinks about a hot topic not in his address. I was living life um, on a here and there basis. Before Mayor Ron Nuremberg even took the stage in front of a packed grand ballroom inside the Marriott River Center, a video played of testimonials from graduates of the city's Ready to Work program. The $200 million initiative took up a lot of space in the mayor's prepared remarks. Too many San Antonio families remain a missed paycheck away from disaster. 
District 8 Councilman Manny Pelaez, who said his announcement this morning that he'll run for mayor next year when Nuremberg is term limited, was purely coincidental. Pelaez called ready to work too important to fail, but said nearly two years after enrollment began, its impact has been minimal. There's a lot of people in the community who are very worried that we're not hitting a lot of the numbers that we thought we'd be hitting at this point. The mayor pushed back on the criticism. This is a work in progress, and we're not counting widgets, we're changing people's lives. Absent from the mayor's address, the status of talks to move the San Antonio Spurs downtown. Despite a veil of secrecy, buzz about the potential move continues to build. With UTSA's announcement last week that they will tear down the Institute of Texan Cultures and rebuild the museum somewhere else, comes renewed speculation that this area could someday be home to a new Spurs arena. The mayor said he had no announcements on that front, but did explain why he believes downtown is the proper place for that type of venue. Major uh, event venues are most suitable in the places where we have the most people being able to access them. The city, it's important to note, was given the exclusive option to buy or lease the nearly 14 acres of land earlier this year. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. And as Dylan mentioned, District 8 City Councilman Manny Pillai is campaigning to become the next mayor. He wants to give his own state of the city address someday. He posted this video on social media announcing his campaign. There had been speculation for some time that Pelias was interested in running for mayor and that he would publicly announce his intent to run. He's been a councilman for nearly eight years. Pelias's announcement comes almost three months after District 9 Councilman John Courage announced he was running for mayor. Some other council members have expressed interest as well, but have not officially made any moves. The mayoral election will happen in May of 2025. New at 5, Kerr County Sheriff's deputies making an arrest in a deadly shooting overnight in Kerrville. Deputies say the suspect is now charged with murdering his wife. We're told Isidro Arias Benitez allegedly shot his wife, Ana Marie Puente Ortiz, while the couple's children were inside the home. Deputies say they arrived at the home in the 100 block of Corbin Circle, not too far from I-10. At around 1.45 last night, they found Ortiz with a gunshot wound. She was taken to the hospital, but deputies say she died there. The husband's bond set at $500,000. The children now in the care of family members and Kerr County deputies are still investigating. On trial for murder today, Tavares Anderson found not guilty by a jury. That verdict announced about 2.30 this afternoon. Anderson accused of shooting and killing Malcolm Everett during an argument in a 2021 apartment complex shooting. Anderson's lawyer told the jury that Anderson shot and killed Everett in self-defense, saying Everett attacked Anderson. He was facing up to life in prison, but today that jury found him not guilty. We are learning some new details about the arrest of a UTSA student who is accused of tagging parts of the UTSA campus with what's been called anti-Israel graffiti. A source familiar with the investigation called KSAT 12 News and said the messages included profanity aimed at Israeli defense forces. There was also a message that draws attention to the civilians killed in Gaza. The source says there were also Palestinian flags painted on some of the posters. UTSA's president posted a response on Twitter saying the school supports free speech, but has zero tolerance for damage to its property. The UTSA police chief says the 21 year old student faces academic discipline. The student also arrested though on criminal charges and has since been released on bond. Scary side on loop 410 this morning is a school bus full of pre K for SA kids hydroplanes on 410 and crashes into the median. You see it right there. That incident happened about 930 on the westbound lanes of Loop 410 near North Star Mall on board the bus. About 40 students and eight adults from the South Education Center pre K for SA location. They were on their way to swim lessons. The bus ended up coming to a stop up against the median. No injuries reported. Officials with pre K for SA say all children on the bus secured in five point child safety seats. No other vehicles involved. They tell us parents were contacted. The students were returned to campus. Multiple lanes were closed after that crash, but they have since reopened. A groundbreaking sentencing today. The parents of the Michigan school shooters sentenced to prison for their roles in that massacre. 
Jennifer and James Crumbly were sentenced to 10 to 15 years for involuntary manslaughter in their separate trials. ABC's Zareen Shaw with how the families of their son's victims played a role in this first time sentencing. The parents of Oxford High School mass shooter Ethan Crumley were sentenced today to 10 to 15 years behind bars after each was found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter in separate trials this year, becoming the first parents in America to be found criminally liable for a shooting committed by their child. Judge Cheryl Matthews saying of James and Jennifer Crumley's sentencing that parents are not expected to be psychic, but these convictions are not about poor parenting. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runway train. Prosecutors had asked for up to 15 years, while Michigan State sentencing guidelines say a maximum sentence of up to seven years. Before that sentencing was announced, the parents facing the families of the four victims. And why you were running away from your son and your responsibilities. I was forced to do the worst possible thing a parent could do. I was forced to say goodbye to my medicine. This tragedy has taken a incredible toll on our family. Prosecutors made a case during the trial that the parents didn't do anything to secure the gun their son had access to and missed signs of serious mental health problems. The day of the shooting, counselors talked to the parents about concerns over Ethan's drawings, which raised red flags. According to prosecutors, James and Jennifer did not tell anyone that their son had access to a gun. Soon after the meeting with counselors, Ethan killed four people at his school and injured several others. I stand today not to ask for your forgiveness, as I know it may be beyond reach but to express my sincerest apologies for the pain that has been caused. Please know that I am truly very sorry. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. So it's not clear if the Crumley parents will appeal their sentence. As for their son, Ethan, he is serving life in prison. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. The deadline to file your taxes coming up fast. April 15th is next Monday. And there is still time to get some help if you need it. We have until the 15th to take advantage of the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. You can use the service to file your taxes for free. The programming is available at 13 different locations throughout San Antonio and Fredericksburg. Some of those locations even offer refund anticipation loans without charging you fees or interest. For addresses, times, and more information, you can visit vitasa.org. It's April, time to get ready to Fiesta and the number one accessory, of course, those Fiesta medals. You could get one tomorrow by heading out to Des Galore on Meadow Leaf on the west side near Barbach Road. Justin Horn and Mia Montgomery will be out there handing out medals. The line starts at 4 p.m. The actual giveaway happening at 6. Yes, it's that time. Man, from the eclipse to this. Okay, next, if you own a home, homeowners insurance can help protect your biggest investment and just like everything else it's costing more but there are some ways you can control how much you pay we're going to tell you how after the break i'm myra arthur here in the ksat newsroom and here's what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today a woman charged with starving her stepson to death and now that case is at the center of a trial that began today we take you inside the courtroom as video of the boy begging for food was shown to the jury. Plus, a genetic disorder causes a range of tumors and there is no cure. Why the world's largest patient gathering will happen in San Antonio. And the idea here is to further research for a condition called NF. That and more today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. It is through the roof. The price of homeowners insurance keeps on climbing. In Texas, rates rose just 23% over the last year. That's double the national average. Yeah, you've seen it in your premium. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It's found some ways to help you save money. The cost of insuring your home is up dramatically, pushed by extreme weather events and inflation, making repairs more expensive. So what can you do? Start by shopping around. Consider a local independent broker who sells policies from several insurance companies. And this website, HelpInsure.com, helps you compare companies and policies. And you've heard it before, but bundle up. 
Purchasing your homeowners and auto insurance from the same company can provide savings of up to 30% overall. Keep your deductible high. Going to a $1,000 deductible from $500 could shave your premium by 25%. Keep your house in shape. The age of your roof matters. If your roof is old, your insurer may charge you up to 15% more. So get ahead of the storm and replace your roof. Same goes for older plumbing. A home security system and gas and water leak detectors could also save you money. Clean up your credit. Like it or not, most insurers can use what's called a credit-based insurance score. They can check your score often and use it to set your price. Consider your risk. Many insurers say the risk of dog bites and liability lawsuits is greater with certain breeds, so you might be denied coverage or have to pay more. Trampolines and swimming pools are safety risks. And if you're a smoker, that could be a fire risk raising your cost. Finally, be cautious about filing claims. Filing one every few years, probably not a big deal, but experts say if you file three in just a couple of years, you could end up with higher rates or even being dropped. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Take a look outside with live cam. That sun came out today. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we, we needed this yesterday. <laughs> Don't get me started. All right, we'll move on. Uh, and we could get some more rain tonight. How's that? That's yeah. happy. I, I will say the crowd yesterday were great. Yeah, they were. I thought maybe they would be disappointed. What They just were excited to be part of it. Everybody this. got to see the world go dark. Yes. And in many parts of our area, including parts of San Antonio, we had enough cracks in the clouds or thinning of the clouds to be able to see totality and the corona and even the chromosphere, the little red parts outside of it. Anyway, now our focus shifts to the severe thunderstorm threat tonight, basically up through 4 a.m. The primary time frame, I think we're going to see the most storms developing in the most likely time you could see what in your neighborhood is from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Hail, as usual, the number one risk. We could have some hail cores localized with hail of one to two inches and maybe a few wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. Now, remember, we won't know where the hail is going to form or where it's going to fall until that hail making storm actually develops. Then we can track it. Here's the big picture. See a few thunderstorms off to the north of us. We pointed those out earlier, just west of Marble Falls and even the Austin area. Then you get up into the Panhandle, Amarillo down to Lubbock, some shower and thunderstorm activity there. Our action has yet to actually develop, but it's being driven by this upper level low that's over West Texas and northern Mexico. Also, a cold front here at the surface that's swinging through. All these combined with our humid, unstable, muggy atmosphere is likely to lead to more thunderstorm development in the hours ahead. Here's the latest future cast and notice some shower activity popping up around 9, 10 p.m., but becoming more numerous and more widespread from 11 p.m. all the way through 3 a.m. And don't pay very close attention to the exact placement of these storms. They could really be many miles each way, north, south, west or east. Just the mere fact and the coverage of these storms, the fact that the computer model is showing this widespread coverage later on tonight. By the morning commute tomorrow, we're A-OK. -okay. The action's out of here. You won't have the same issues in the morning commute tomorrow that we had today in terms of rain and dampness. Here's our severe weather threat in terms of a spatial look at it. Yes, we are under that scattered risk in most of our area. Lesser risk closer to the Rio Grande. But notice the highest threat is basically Selma, Schertz, New Braunfels, to Blanco, Fredericksburg, Austin, Gonzales, Hallettsville, and points northward. That's where, on a scale of one to five, it's a three out of five. Basically a slam dunk. There's going to be some storms in that area. Just exactly where will the worst ones be? All right, let's talk temperatures and dew point changes. 90 for our high temperature today. We're at 89 right now. Check out Lubbock, 47, 54 in Midland. 67 in Abilene. There's some cooler air that's going to be moving in. We're 95 in Del Rio right now. Hondo at 92 degrees. And the dry line is actually right on the edge of our neighborhood. In and around Bear County, dew points right around 70. 
very sticky with that temperature of 89. It feels like it's five degrees warmer than the actual air temperature. Well, the dry line is going to move in and the cold front is going to move through later tonight. That's going to plummet the humidity. It's going to sweep away all that mugginess. So dew points will be falling off later tonight and early tomorrow morning. We'll go several days all the way through Friday with the lack of humidity in the air. 58 in the morning tomorrow, a sunny day, 75 in the afternoon, but windy a northwest wind at 20 with some higher gusts. We'll get into the wind details uh, more greatly coming up at six o'clock. Quiet the rest of the week. Humidity is going to surge back in place by Saturday. Highs in the 80s mostly. Very pleasant. Thank you. All right. Take me out to the ball game. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Mary Rominger live at Wolf Stadium for opening day. Mary. Yep, first pitch is set for 7.05 between the Naturals and the Missions. The Missions are off to a perfect start to the season. We're also talking Spurs right after the break. It's opening day here at Nelson Wolf Stadium for the San Antonio Missions, who are debuting in front of their home crowd, fresh off of an impressive sweep over the Sod Poodles in Anarillo. And today, the Missions welcome Northwest Arkansas to town. And the player to keep your eyes on is first baseman Nathan Martarella. Martarella had eight hits, seven runs, four RBI, one home run, and only one strikeout over the course of the three game series against the Sod Poodles. But really, across the board, the Missions missions bats are on fire. Two grand slams the missions hit on Saturday alone. First pitch tonight is at 705. At six o'clock we'll hear from one of the guys that hit a grand slam, Zach Rex. The San Antonio Spurs begin their final road trip of the 2023-24 season at Memphis against the Grizzlies, who, like the Spurs, are out of playoff contention. The Spurs are coming off of a double OT loss to the Philadelphia 76ers, and rookie Victor Wembanyama put forth another eye-popping performance. Wembanyama led San Antonio with 33 points, 18 rebounds, 7 blocked shots, and 6 assists. There were towering expectations put on Wemby even before playing an NBA game. It's clear by now when Binyama surpassed those expectations, which was important for him to do, and he's staying even keeled through the ups and downs. Try to stay, uh, you know, humble in victory and don't uh, collapse under, you know, losses, but it's, I would never stop enjoying uh, wins, but I would just, it might be very intense, but I, I won't do it for long, you know, because we are always got the next game to focus on. And I think the only time I'll celebrate a win for many days and weeks is when we win the whole thing. Tip off is tonight at seven o'clock. The Spurs are trying to avoid matching or even setting a new record for their worst record in franchise history of 20 and 62 set in 1997. We'll be live again here from missions opening day at six o'clock. We'll be talking missions, Spurs and Brahmas. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mary. You notice Wemby didn't say if they win. He said when they win the whole thing. I like, I like attitude. that. Thanks, Mary. We'll be right back. Before we go, I want to show you a traffic trouble spot. This is 410 at WW White Road. You can see traffic down to just one lane. It looks as if something may have spilled on the roadway there, but look how busy the access road is. It is backing up. This is an area you're going to want to avoid. They're down to one lane, and that one is moving very slowly as everyone rubbernecks. So stay away. 410 and WW White. Uh, gusty tomorrow, so the cold front moves through tonight with it, the scattered storms, and then tomorrow is going to be windy, but cooler and less humid from 90 today to 75 for the high tomorrow. Call Very the rest nice. of the week. Thank you for watching the Music 5 with us. See you back here at 6. World News is next.